Hello, welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you've been here before. I do want to apologize I didn't have a video last week because it was supposed to be this video, but I took longer to finish the macaw drawing, so I'm sorry about that. But today I'm going to be showing you how I got this effect of feathers with colored pencil on this macaw. If you're interested in how I did the background, I do have a video up on that from a couple weeks ago, and I will link that. And I used solvent in that video, but in this video, I'm not going to be using solvent, so all you need for this video are your colored pencils. And I think that this could work for any exotic bird or even any bird. I'm just going to be showing you how I got the feather effect. Okay, so when I'm looking at this, it's like a completely empty sketch. It's a little bit intimidating because I have all these feathers to fill in that I've already sketched out. So to make the process easier, I'm going to break it down and I'm going to start around the face because I have the face already pretty much done. I'm going to work my way from like around the face to the head and neck and then all the way down the body of the macaw and that way it's not going to be as intimidating. And how I'm starting is with some black pencil in those shadowed areas to kind of outline the general shapes of where the feathers are. And it's kind of small feathers on the head and around the face too. They're not big feathers like the body feathers would be, so it really doesn't have to be um, super detailed or the outlines of the feathers don't have to be super precise. It's more just small little feathers that are supposed to look soft. So I use the black for the shadowed areas and then I like to add blue or green on top of it to give the black more depth, of course. And then of course I'm filling in the colors of the feathers between that. But with everything I do, I'm making sure that the pencil strokes are still going in the same direction. You can see some kind of linear looking pencil strokes. It's best to use these types of strokes when you're doing feathers because it's more realistic. So I'm gonna stick to the linear method of coloring here as I add more and more layers. And I'm not pressing too hard, I'm just gradually building up my layers here. And you can see there's a bit of a blend between the yellow and the blue that creates a bit of a green and everything. So I really studied my reference photo. The colors on this don't really matter. You could use this for any bird. It's more the method of coloring that I'm doing for the feathers that I'm trying to emphasize in this video. But anyways, as I'm starting to work a little bit away from the face, since I do have a background on this, I have to kind of modify the background a little bit to make sure the edges of the feathers look realistic against the background. So I am going to kind of work on that later, but for now I'm just gonna focus on the feathers themselves. A lot of the feathers have like weird patterns. It's not always gonna be perfect. It's a little bit irregular. And I think that that looks good and more natural than if everything looked too perfect and every feather was like the same size. So you don't really have to worry too much about that. You can kind of vary uh, things like how big each feather is and everything because I think that makes it look more realistic too. So I'm not worried about that. I'm just worried about creating those linear strokes and of course the shadows and highlights which are going to help me get depth. Now, there aren't any like white highlights in this. There's a few around the outline that I'm going to work on later, but there aren't any really bright highlights around this. I'm just going to use the brighter pencils, so like the light blue and the yellow as my highlight, and I'm going to use the black and maybe the dark indigo as I'm referring it to my shadows. Also, of course, this is kind of going to be a long process when you are working on something like feathers or fur or even skin if you're doing a portrait. So you kind of have to be patient with it and everything will come together in the end, but you have to kind of compartmentalize a little bit and do like a step by step or section by section to avoid getting too overwhelmed by everything. Anyways, I am working down the macaw right now. You can see there's a big area, a big space left white, and that's because there's yellow feathers that are more like, um, I guess you would say on the underbelly of the macaw that are a little bit of a different softer texture that I'm going to work on as well. And it's kind of hard with something like a bright yellow where you still have to add in some shadows. You kind of have to use almost a brown tone or an orangey tone in order to do that. So I'm using a brown tone and a little bit of a warm gray tone. Now for these feathers, I'm not going to have nearly as many linear lines. So there are linear lines. There are going to be some lines, but they're going to be a bit softer. And then I might include some sharper lines for detail in some areas. But since I want these feathers to look even softer than the other feathers, 
and kind of even more fluffy and I don't want them to be in too many separate sections. I want them to kind of all blend together a bit so I'm not going to use a terrible amount of sharp lines. There are some areas though that do have a bit of a shadow or a little bit of a detail so I won't ignore those areas but you can already see as I'm coloring these feathers I'm still using the linear method of coloring so I'm not just coloring in random directions but I'm using more like the side of my pencil to do it and I'm not using as sharp um, of a point or I'm not using as much pressure to avoid getting too too many lines down and also these areas are rather light too so I have to be careful not to make my shadows too too dark there are some shadows that are more black I would say and very dark that I use my black pencil for um, but I kind of would recommend starting off with the lighter shadows and then later if you need to add darker shadows to a lighter area you can always do that later you don't have to start out with that Okay, so I realize now that I kind of skipped over the part where I'm working on these blue feathers towards the edge of the macaw, but fear not, there are plenty more blue feathers to come, so I'll tell you about my methods on how I do that soon. But anyways, back to the underbelly of the macaw. The warm gray creates a cool shadow tone, not a cool tone, it creates a warm shadow tone because it's a warm gray, but it creates um, a cool looking shadow tone, but you can also use like burnt sienna or more of like an orange golden color or a brown. The warm gray was kind of just my choice and what I did. I could have used a different color, more like a brown looking back on it, but that's that's okay. It turned out fine. Um, so again, it doesn't really matter. The colors are up to you what you're doing and what project you're working on and what kind of drawing you're doing. It's mostly the method that matters. And by the way, I haven't mentioned this yet and you might be able to tell if you own these already, but I'm using the Polychromos pencils, the Faber-Castell Polychromos, and I like to use these for things like this because they just keep a really sharp point and you can really get those line details in without really having to sharpen them as much as a pencil like Prismacolor. Not to say you can't do this with Prismacolors or any wax-based pencil because yes, you can. You just kind of have to work on keeping your point sharp and really being aware of that and watching out for when it gets blunt because you don't want to use a blunt pencil when you're doing feather detailing. I'm taking a little bit of a break from working on the yellow underbelly of the macaw and now I'm going to work a little bit on those blue feathers on the edge and finish that side up before I move on to finish the entire middle and right side of the drawing. Now these feathers were more smooth and I pretty much just used a normal smooth blending technique for these and they do have more of precise outlines. It's not really as soft looking as the feathers on the underbelly. So for th me, this was a little bit easier because I'm used to doing more like a smooth blend. And again, I'm using like my black, my dark indigo blue, and a couple of lighter blue colors. So that's pretty much all I used for those blue feathers. But back to the underbelly, this took me forever. I went through multiple podcast episodes working on this, which by the way, I recommend doing that or maybe listening to an audiobook or something because it's easy to like start rushing towards the end and I didn't want to do that at all for this drawing. So I made sure that I was taking my time with all the areas, even the ones that I wanted to finish sooner. Now, I think I already mentioned this, but you do want to have the feathers already sketched in before you do this. Don't leave it until... Um, you go in with colored pencils and sketch them out with the colored pencils. No, I would just do it all beforehand in your sketch so you know where everything goes. Now for the blue feathers on the body of the macaw, as I said before, they're a bit more smooth, but I want to focus a lot on creating a transition from like the dark indigo and a little bit of black for the shadowed areas into the lighter blue colors. But there's a lot of shadow because these feathers, of course, overlap and I want them to look like they're all together, not just like separate feathers next to each other. I want it to look realistic. So I'm going to focus a lot on creating shadows where they overlap and kind of where they come together and everything. That's really, really important. And I think if you can get the depth right, um, and of course, like the contrast and everything and create something that looks like it's all together and natural looking, then you can pretty much succeed at doing feathers or fur or whatever you're doing. So there's kind of some different shapes, smaller feathers and bigger feathers, which I've sketched out already. And I am even doing some feathers that you can only see like half of the feather. They're going to get really small towards the top too, by the way. Right now I'm working on the bigger feathers and there's kind of like this really interesting section too where the blue feathers meet the yellow underbelly 
So I am going to go in with my warm gray again and even my black to create some more shadows and like nooks and crannies in that area, which I think is important to keep things from looking flat and having everything be a little bit more transitional. Um, and these blue feathers actually were more fun for me than the underbelly because I really just felt like I was doing normal smooth blending, really just the indigo blue into the lighter blue colors and just kind of creating those shapes and transitioning everything together. So it's kind of the same process over and over again. I really do think these feathers turned out beautiful though. Well, the entire macaw, I think, it's a really beautiful bird and I think that I might do more exotic birds in the future. If you want me to, let me know what bird I should do. I'm working on an animal series right now, so I'm going to do a couple different animals since I don't normally do a lot of animal drawings, but I am pretty comfortable with birds for some reason, <laughs> but I'm going to try and branch out and maybe do like a reptile or something else for my next drawing in this series. Another important thing though, even though this is smooth blending and it's not as um, kind of all over the place as the feathers were around the face, I still am going to be careful to still color in kind of a linear direction and all in the same direction that the feather is going in. You know, I think that that kind of helps things all come together and you don't get any random pencil strokes in random directions. So that's what I like to do for this. Now, some of these feathers towards the bottom, you can see there's like kind of these dark spaces between the feathers. And I think that that is part of the reason where when you want to do things like shadows and things like that, I think there's little details like that that really kind of make everything come together. So make sure you don't ignore anything in your sketch and all of those weird details you want to add in into your drawing because it will look more realistic in the end. Even though I'm using the same method, they all look just a little bit different, as I said before. Some are smaller and different shapes and moving in different directions. And I kind of just want to go feather by feather and do one at a time so that I can focus one at a time and compartment the same thing that I did when I was starting out with the drawing. I'm just working on them one at a time and finishing one section before I move on to another. Now you can see I'm working on the feathers that transition between the yellow belly of the macaw and the blue feathers. And these are a little bit smaller and there's a lot of shadows going on, but when I first initially finished this, it didn't look like it went together with the yellow belly of the macaw very much, and that's why I kind of went in and used my warm gray and my black and created a few more shadows that you can see. And that's pretty much it for the tutorial portion. Actually, there is one more thing I want to talk about, but I'm actually going to play these clips of me finishing the feathers right now for anyone who's interested in seeing that. And then there are some um, interesting feathers on the right side where it kind of shows like the underside of the feather and I want to talk about that. So once I get there, I will talk about that. So for the small feathers at the top, the most important thing is to make sure you still have dimension and to make sure that it's not flat. So I still wanted there to be shadowed areas and lighter areas, even though this was kind of harder to do because the feathers were so much smaller. And then on the very right side is kind of the underside of a feather. So it's pretty dark and a little bit of yellow. And I did leave a little white edge around it because sometimes you'll see that, especially when light is shining a certain way. You can use um, a little bit of an edge or a stick eraser to get that if you have one as well. And that is pretty much all that I have for this video. I hope that it was helpful, even though it was kind of short and just a little feather tutorial. And I hope that you enjoy this macaw drawing. Again, let me know if you want me to do another exotic bird or any type of bird. I'm going to be doing a couple different animals here, so watch out for videos on those. 
and thank you guys so much for watching as always and leave me a comment let me know what you think about the video bye guys